What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another live stream here on the Sergeant Tank YouTube channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. What we're going to be taking a look at is at the Southwestern Michigan Aquarium Society, or SWAMIS, in the Kalamazoo, Michigan market area. Uh, you can definitely check it out. I'll go ahead and add that information for you guys down in the description below if you're checking this out. With that regard, we're going to go ahead give it a couple of minutes here, and I'm going to walk through live here with you guys before even unbagging this stuff and take a look at some of the species that I did obtain through the auction. Most of the stuff that I'm going to be showing you guys is actually quite difficult to come by, uh, specifically in our market and uh, a lot of other markets for that. Uh, um, from that point of view. But, um, yeah, things I'm definitely stoked about, excited about, things I wasn't necessarily anticipating that would... Uh, that would come through so as anybody has been following the channel for any period of time you would be aware of the fact that uh, i plan on breeding about 50 different species in, in 2019 uh, i bred right around uh between 40 and 50 different species uh for 2018 so this year once i wrap things up and uh and complete things for uh this year but uh, let's go ahead i'm going to pull up the chat screen so I can see who's here in chat. We had a couple of hiccups. I apologize about that. Uh, so anybody coming back, uh, you are at the right place. So um, hopefully uh, technical issues are, are not uh, an issue. All right, so we got Big E's. How you doing? Denny's Aquatics. Hope you found some great fish. Uh, I feel as if uh, yeah, there are definitely scores for sure. You, and you have to appreciate uh, the specimens I'm going to be showing you guys. Um, I definitely have taken a much greater appreciation, especially specifically with uh, some of these live bearing species that I've talked about. I can go ahead and list an entire playlist for you guys down in the description if you guys are checking this out later on with regard to uh, Goodyears and Goodyears is definitely something that I have uh, come to really really enjoy uh, specifically with a lot of the different varieties and let alone the unfortunate circumstances of many of these different specimens being uh, endangered species and uh, a lot of which uh, you could even find on the cares list so we'll give it a couple of minutes here and I will get to um, showing you guys this stuff live i just want to give it a couple of minutes here for a few folks to roll back in uh, i had some technical uh mishaps here just a few minutes ago but hopefully we should be good to to roll on now it was my fault i ended up uh knocking a box i had here over and it kicked off all of my power so i had to reset everything so the joys of of uh of uh the interwebs we got Charlie. How you doing, buddy? Uh, we got Sandy is back. Uh, Robert Myers, uh, Island Queen, My High Plecos. Hello, hello. Uh, yes, Trout Goody is, is a really, really neat Goody. It's one I haven't seen around in about a year and a half. Uh, but if that is something that you are definitely interested in, I will take a mental note. And of course, Charlie, you, have, you can always uh, just message me and let me know. Uh, as I've told you guys before, anybody new here, I definitely uh, enjoy if I have the means to do so in order to support you guys if there's a specific specimen of fish or whatever livestock it may be in order to try to get that to you guys as long as you live here in the United States. And, uh, you know, I don't mind. Um, of course, there is a small fee that's associated just because of the amount of time that goes into it and let alone the risks that are involved when it comes to shipping. But anyway, I'm not going to get into all that. I've helped enough people at this point on the platform uh, with that regard because not a lot of people will offer to do that uh, specifically within the, the the whole YouTube realm and uh, because it does it does require some time uh, when when you're talking about things like that but I, I enjoy seeing the smile and the happiness that others uh, enjoy if they're really looking for something that they've had their heart on for a long time and and can't pick it up in their area. Uh, the auction was this afternoon, uh, uh, Michael. It was uh, about 45 minutes south of us, and it is the club that, when the founders of GVAC, the Grand Valley Aquarium Club, uh, our club, uh, GVAC, originated back in 95. And uh, this club has been around since the 70s, where the folks that, uh, you know, founded the GVAC club to bring it 
uh, closer to our market, even though it's about a 45 minute an hour distance. And it only made sense from a uh, geographical point of view because of the commute to lay it out. And I'm so happy that they did uh, originate and organize a club here in our market because they still work in conjunction with one another um, to support one another in that area. But we definitely have some phenomenal clubs uh, within Michigan, uh, to say the least. Let's see. Uh, we got Charles. How you doing? Uh, Heather Neeson. Hello. All right, you guys. So I'm not going to keep you in suspense anymore. Let's go ahead and get to it. Let me know at any point in time, please, in the chat, if for whatever reason it's not clear um, or if you're having buffering issues or whatever the, the case might be, um, just let me know and I'll try to uh, uh, adjust the lighting so you guys can see again. To reiterate, anybody just jumping in here, I'm going to show you guys right now live before I even do any uh, unbagging of any of the, the livestock to start acclimatizing them uh, and, and put, get them in the quarantine is uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you why they're in the bag. So the first one here is the Celebes half eats, which is a live bearing species. It's a really, really nice. Uh, it's more of a um, uh, more of an omnivore. So if you guys have heard me talk about the the Bell and Sox, which is uh, by far going to be one of the most, if not the most challenging uh, live bearer species that there is because they are very uh, carnivorous. They're definitely a very cannibalistic in order to not necessarily get them to trigger the spawn. You can do that with most live bears. It's more the rearing and the raising of the fry as the fry are very, very cannibalistic upon one another. And the same thing holds true uh, with the parents um, or as individuals, mother or father will predate uh, upon the fry. So uh, definitely can be tricky. I will try to do a video of you guys uh, for you guys at some point in the future. Uh, once I have the time to do so a more in-depth, elaborative edited video not a live video but an edited video on a lot of the stuff that uh, i bring bring you guys updates over the last uh, month or so uh with regard to breeding projects because i know that people do enjoy uh some folks do enjoy the aspects of of uh some tips and tricks when it comes to breeding uh but uh let's see i don't know how well this this is going to show up you guys let me pull up my google hangout screen um so you guys can see. So there is different species of um, half eeks. So you have smaller varieties um, and that type of thing. But these are the Celebes half eeks, which is a, a really neat fish. And I got to be careful, you guys. I just don't want to be sharing any uh, personal information that's on the bag. So we're, we're going to work with what, what we can. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? All right. So these are a blue tail Goodian. So I got a reverse trio here. This is uh, uh, Antinobius uh, Tauri. And there is two females, if it will show. I'm not seeing the chat screen, you guys. So just um, uh, bear with me and I will get to you guys' questions. I'll get the, the mail on there for you. And of course, our coloration isn't going to show up right now. I'll definitely be bringing you guys updates um, uh, once they go through quarantine. Of course, the, the true characteristics of these specimens, of course, they're stressed out. They've been in bags for who knows how long, um, several hours, uh, to, uh, to say the least. So. This was a really, really nice find. These are actually quite difficult to come by. So the species specific, uh, when you think about uh, sword tail strains, so a lot of source, sword tail strains can be either like a Variatus, um, a Hellerai. Uh, these are actually a Hamburg sword tail species specific. And let me pull up that screen again. So these are a really, really neat specimen. Um, I was excited to, to obtain these guys. I, I've seen them come through the club uh, on a uh, through auctions on a few occasions, and now that I have uh, some some open sit, uh, space since I've done some resets, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, be breeding these guys and offering them. 
So. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked about uh, the things that I did acquire. Uh, these right here are a Diamond Tetra. I got a breeding group in there. Let me adjust my mic here for a second. All right. So at any point in time, if you guys have any questions, you guys, or if you want to see something again, please do let me know. That's why I'm doing this for you guys. So again, anybody who's popping in, I appreciate it. We're doing a, a live kind of semi-unboxing, I guess you would say. Everything has been in the bags since they've been put in the bags, uh, which I can tell you has been several hours for most of the stuff. Uh, these are probably one of the most things I was I was the most excited about. And this is a Xenotoka Eisenai, which is a Rio uh, Compostello. It's a pair. And I actually, I obtained two different pairs of the Eisenai. Um, these are one that you just don't see uh, is what it comes down to. I mean, they just don't come too often into the hobby. Uh, so I'm really excited. Uh, as you guys have been following me for any period of time, you know that I've definitely taken a liking to Goodyids and working with uh, different types of Goodyids and Limias and that type of thing. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, most of the stuff that I'm showing you guys is critically endangered, um, unfortunately. So that's why I even take a, a more appreciation to these uh, species of fish. So I'm not going to show you the other bag. It would just be redundant. It's the same thing. I obtained two different pairs. Uh, these are our Zo uh, Zoneticus tequila. So I need to obtain males. And uh, I got, uh, or I'm sorry, I need to obtain females. I got a couple of males in here. Not sure how well it will show up for you. Actually, it looks like there's three males in here. There we go. Look at that. Oh, stunning. Color gets a lot better than that, too. Another one I was excited about, one that I did have in my repertoire uh, at one point, is uh, Limia Perugia. So I obtained, again, I'm not going to show you the other bag. I obtained, uh, looks like, yeah, two pairs of these guys. Um, it will stop moving around. All right. I think you guys get the point. It's really, really hard to see. I understand that in these bags. And... Let me see here. Um, then I obtained a actually two males. Um, these are a chromo aphysimian. So a couple male killifish. To add to my repertoire, and then eventually I have to obtain the female species. But for the price, I couldn't pass it up. And give me just a second. I think that about does it.
that does it all. Oh, not fish related. But if you guys want something even better than sponge filters, go the box style filters. Um, I'm not going to go into very basic, been around pretty much uh, uh, origination when it comes to filtration besides undergraven filters. They've been around for years. Um, and a lot of hobbyists utilize these. The, they work phenomenally well. So um, nobody was bidding on it. And I... I just needed it. It's always good to have extra. Not that I needed it. It's always good to have extra uh, filtration on hand. Uh, we got Maple Street Aquatic. So if you guys weren't aware, uh, the first live stream just about 30 or 40 minutes ago now, uh, unfortunately, long story short, uh, I was sending folks over. I had the opportunity to meet him um, at Swamis, uh, which is the auction that I'm showing you guys here that I obtained this stuff from and he happened to be there and obtained some stuff. So I definitely encourage you guys to check it out and, uh, I'll go ahead and add a link for you guys to his channel down in the description so you can check him out. So I know that he's been, uh, working on building his repertoire of fish room and, and that type of stuff. So, uh, if you guys enjoy that kind of content, then I encourage you to check it out. So Charlie is jealous. So, Again, um, Andy uh, Prakowski that I had here and I did a mini series on. I had my live stream that I broke down into the five part mini series for you guys to check out. I'll go ahead and also add that down in the description if you guys want to check out that playlist. I encourage you to do it. If any of the goodies uh, that I share with you guys, even a fraction of that intrigues you, check out his channel. Um, I would definitely consider him an expert in the field when it comes to um good uh he's grown up in the hobby is a lot of experience being a scientist more or less by trade um so yeah when it comes to um uh when it comes to just about anything with these guys he's my source to go to um and uh because oftentimes as you know if, if something comes through and if it's not being identified as far as locality or something like that uh it's nice to be able to to have uh, individuals uh, in in your um, in your contacts to be able to reach out to. We got Eric going mad. How you doing, buddy? Island Queen, I think. Yeah, you were here. Welcome back. Uh, we got Priscilla in the house. How you doing, Priscilla? So a couple of other items uh, we have Rob Lupton with Flip Aquatics will be at the Grand Valley Aquarium Club coming up this coming Saturday. Um, so if you guys are in the shrimp and you want to have an opportunity there, I definitely encourage you guys. I'll go ahead and put all that information for you guys down in the description as well. And I will be putting a notice out here um, at some point this week over on Facebook and probably on Instagram. Uh, so if you guys are in around the, the area and you want to come and hang out, I encourage you guys to do it. We always go for dinner afterward. So uh, basically starts 7 o'clock. Um, time that most people get there is about 6.30. Have time to chit-chat, look at what we, quote-unquote, consider a not-so-mini auction. This is kind of a, it's an inside joke thing. Uh, but really it, it is a not so mini auction it, it actually is usually a pretty decent size auction uh just for a monthly meeting where it's not an actual quote unquote auction you know um so a lot of stuff every month comes through and that's where i've been able to be fortunate enough to acquire a lot of the things that you guys have seen the time that i've been here on youtube uh is through my own club and uh yeah, so i know not everybody has that uh, but you know again i'm not going to go into the importance of joining clubs i know some people uh probably get here may, <laughs> may get sick of me talking about it but i just can't put enough importance on the fact that local clubs are what make this hobby stronger um and, uh, of course, working in conjunction with local fish stores, mom and pop shops in order to ensure that they thrive and continue to be successful. But if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Um, if you want to see anything that I just mentioned, I can go ahead and show you guys again. Um, I don't mind doing that. So I figured I might as well go ahead uh, for a few minutes here, jump on. This is something I haven't done in months where I've actually brought you guys an update live with regard to... Uh, livestock is something I used to do, and I genu 
usually end up obtaining livestock at just about every meeting. So every month I obtain something. I just don't necessarily bring it to you guys live. And I know some people enjoy it. Some may not, but um, yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to be working with these, uh, with these species, some that I haven't had before and others I have in now working those back into the fish room since I now have the space to do it since going through the resets. We also have our big auction that's coming up here locally that I've been sharing with you guys. It's over on Facebook. You can follow us over at Sergeant Tank on the Facebook group. And of course, that information will be down for you guys in the description as well if you want to check it out. With regard to the October 27th, our fall annual auction, we have two that we run each year, one in the spring, one in the fall, and they are phenomenal auctions. Phenomenal. Uh, I would say between the one that will be coming up here uh, in the Detroit market area here in Michigan, which is well known, the uh, Michigan uh, uh, MACNA or not MACNA, but um, MCA or Michigan Cichlid Association um, in kind of that Detroit market area, I would say between that and between GVAC, it's definitely neck and neck when it comes to uh, the amount of bags in, in the amount of turnout that comes through. So um, I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Um, and of course, you guys can support in that way. If you want to share it, you don't have to. There's no obligation with it. Uh, but if you want to obtain that link, again, I, I don't have it available for you guys right now. But if you're watching this in the replay, I will have that information for you guys down in the description. Please, um, that's a great way to support um, us if you if you want to support that way and uh, be able to kind of get that information out there to people. Uh, Annie Confetti, hello. You are on the big screen. Yep. Uh, and then you guys had the swap there in Chicago, um, which I believe is what Eric or Don Matt is talking about. Uh, was a pleasure meeting you, Jeremy. I look forward to getting some livestock from you in the feature radon. Thank you so much again. If you guys are just joining, uh, Maple Street Aquatics had the opportunity to meet and chit chat. Uh, actually, a couple of different individuals. The other one, um, just out of respect, I won't I won't mention uh, the the name. I don't have a YouTube channel, but they definitely are a supporter. Um, of my channel here and then of course of the community so um, it's always exciting to see and I'm just always in awe to the fact that people are even I'm not trying to talk down upon myself but um, that people enjoy and, and watch the content so I definitely I'm more honored than those who come and uh, meet me I guess you would say so I'm just like uh, I, I promise you anybody that have met me can 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 vouch to this what you see on camera is what you get so uh island queen thanks so much darcy have a great day uh i got so many new fish at the swap awesome right on uh that is the way to go swaps auctions uh i'm leaning i'm on the fence right now uh so one that's coming up in november which is the ohio Secret association one that i haven't been to one that i've been wanting to go to for years um it is i've heard nothing but outstanding things about the ohio sicko association and i would absolutely love to go a lot of factors need to go into that before i can make a commitment i will definitely let you guys know um hopefully by the first of november by the end of the month i should i should have an answer if i'm gonna go if i'm not gonna go what days i would go that type of thing so Still logistically working a lot of stuff out, um, but let me know. I mean, if you guys are watching this later on, let me know down in the comments um, if you're going to the Ohio Cichlid Association, Ohio Cichlid Association in November. Gomad is sitting on Turbo's couch. I right, go in the character, you guys. Um, all right. Let's see. Any questions, you guys? Um, any any questions at all uh, about what I got, uh, what I plan on getting, um, that type of thing? But uh, yeah, so 
If not, uh, we'll probably just kind of wrap things up here. I didn't plan on doing a real, real long live stream. And uh, yeah, so I, I appreciate you guys joining me um, here on Sunday on an impromptu live stream. Uh, definitely looking forward to bringing you guys some updates here and uh, that type of stuff. So if there's no other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap things up so I can start acclimatizing these guys, get them in quarantine and uh, get back to the family and all of that stuff here uh, at my place. Uh, let's see here. Diet for... Are you talking about the loose of penis? So a turbo fish said diet for your loose of penis. All right. AJ, are you, I'm assuming that you're just trying to, you're trying to drag this home. I know what you're doing. Um, all right. So diet wise for the loose penis. Now, when you're raising them up from fry state, they love, uh, Daphnia. You can do brine mica worms. They absolutely love mica worms. Once they get a little bit bigger, you can start using either grindle or white worms, banana worms, uh, that type of thing. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty forgiving once you get them to about that three to four week stage and they're super, super hardy. Uh, and I think a lot of that comes down to conditional changes and it's really hard to talk about conditioning a fish. I've talked about it before, but I don't know how many people really get it. Uh, you can truly condition a lot of different species of fish. Uh, in families of fish to accommodate whatever it is that you're working with. It doesn't happen overnight, but through time, if you do it in the appropriate steps, you can definitely take something that may quote unquote require more acidified water, you know, where the water can't be so hard type of deal. Most of the stuff I breed in all tap water this dechlorinated tap water. I very minimally do anything with the main ecosystems when it comes to utilizing RO. There is some instances where I do use it. Now with the embryos or the eggs, and as far as hatching them out, that is different. It's kind of apples to oranges, but if you're talking just raising them up in and maybe not even the focus as far as breeding. They will take also pellets, um, so dry foods. I mean, a lot of stuff that will sink down towards the bottom because that's generally where they're, a lot of times they'll feed off from, but they'll also uh, feed off from. So uh, like a hammered matten filter, I find is really, really nice, especially for fry. And I keep them in with my shrimp. Um, and uh, they do phenomenally well, phenomenally well. So hammer mat and filter, a lot of surface area gives them an opportunity. They don't do anything with the shrimp. The shrimp don't do anything to them. And it, it's a good balance of an ecosystem. They do phenomenally well uh, in conjunction with one another. Um, but yeah, so I try to bring you guys a video at some point. I mean, there is content out there. If you want to know more about breeding right now, when it comes to uh, specifically the Synodonis lucipennis, I would check out Greg Sage at Select Aquatics. I mean, everybody knows about Greg Sage. Uh, he's a legend in the hobby, and uh, a lot of great information is there. I, I do things a little bit differently, um, but there's a lot of great information that you can acquire uh, with regard to the aspects of breeding, not only with that species, but a lot of other stuff as well. So, yeah. Uh, so rainbow fish, uh, as far as a diet, uh, I just feed them the same mix, uh, is what I feed a lot of my other cichlids. So that's Hakari gold in combination with tetracolor granules in combination with Omega one. So if I had to choose one out of the three, I would definitely go hands down every time been using it for over 12 years. That's Omega one super color. I don't sell the product. I'm not endorsed by the product. I'm not sponsored or paid for by the product. It's just one that I will personally put my stamp of approval on. If I had to choose one food right now and get rid of everything besides Tetracolor, um, I jumped on the bandwagon. I used to use it years back, 
but that was actually from Lucas. I jumped on the on the bandwagon now for about two years using Tetracolor granules, and <laughs> everything eats Tetracolor granules. I don't know what they're putting in that food, but um, yeah. So I got to give uh, Lucas credit for that one. But I mean, the Tetracolor does phenomenally well. Uh, shrimp love it. All my fish love it, live bears, cichlids, you name it. Um, it, it, it works really well. Uh, are you going to put your half peaks in the tank by themselves or with other fish? They will be a species only tank. That's a great question. So anything I mentioned here will be all in its own designated ecosystems because as you guys are aware, I breed majority of anything I keep, even some of my main display tanks by intent uh, is to breed uh, a lot of the stuff that I even maintain in my in my main displays if I haven't already spawned it already. Um, it's just something that I enjoy to do. All right. But I think that does it. Um, if I miss anything, you guys can definitely let me know in the comment section where I definitely enjoy to continue on this conversation with you guys. And as always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. Until the next update, I'll talk to you guys.